I believe deeply in the power of communications to change the world. And as a communications professional, I've been alarmed over the last several years at the proliferation of false information uh, all over the internet. You've, you've maybe seen it as well. And about during the last presidential cycle in 2016, it really reached a fever pitch. People were sharing and posting things that were patently untrue and really alarming. And about this time, one of uh, a distant family member of mine posted something about Barack Obama that was easily disproved. It wasn't true. And now, mind you, everyone has their opinion, and you're entitled to your opinion. And there's lots of reasons not to alike or agree with someone. But let's not get our knickers in a knot about information that's not even real, things that aren't true. So I had made mistakes on the internet before and posting things that weren't necessarily true, and people had kindly pointed it out to me. So I believed that this uh, woman would feel the same way as I did, welcome the, uh, welcome the redirection. And I was wrong, <laughs> and she no longer comes to Thanksgiving. <laughs> So that's what misinformation can do and how it can harm us. And I think that we live in a scary time. People don't know who they can trust. They don't know what they can trust. And when that happens, it's easy to manipulate people. So I believe in the news media as the fourth estate. I believe like our forefathers, that the news media is here to hold us accountable and to help us understand what's important and discern fact from fiction. So the, the media has been eroding over the last several years, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, there's, it's sort of a circular thing, right? The fewer people read and listen to, to media, the less news product they can put out, and then the fewer people, re, you know, fewer people read and listen. So it's become a real problem. And yet news media is here to help us, here to provide the information we need to make the decisions that govern our lives. Most credible news sources will employ professional journalists. Journalists who adhere to a code of ethics because of their profession. They do their very best to provide information that's unbiased and factual. They're all human, people make mistakes, but that's, that's for the most part, that's what they do. There's, yet there's been about a 47% decrease in investment in news media since 2004. 47 in news, excuse me, newsrooms, uh, TV. There's been 1,300 fewer newspapers this last year. 1,300 small town newspapers shut their doors. That means that 1,300 communities are not getting the information they need to govern their lives. They aren't hearing about the school board. They're not hearing about city council. They're not, the, the reporters aren't asking tough questions of county and city officials, people that are in charge of uh, things that impact lives. And I think that's important. I think that's very scary. So there's, there's plenty of ways to get news, right? You might be saying, well, I, there's plenty of news online. I can turn, you know, go on the internet and find something right away. Well, I will have you consider that there's no barrier to entry. Anyone can start a digital news platform. And that's okay. I mean, I think that we, I believe deeply in the power of, uh, you know, expression. Anyone should be able to, to be out there and say, share their opinions and say what they believe in. But the problem is, is that we can't weight that as credible as we would a normal news source. The power is within us. It's really important that we pay attention and learn to discern what we can count on as fact versus opinion. And so we have, we have that power and it's important that we claim that. So information and misinformation, uh, especially with some of these social platforms, can really cause some problems. Um, because it's so easy to, to have a social media platform, there's been a deliberate campaign to misinform and divide us by governments, individuals, entities that are seeking to create divide in our country. And we can't keep letting that happen. So not only can it mess with family dinners, 
but it can also cause real problems. Um, Pizzagate is an example. The past, a few years ago, people were trying to discredit um, Hillary Clinton and said that she was uh, put out stories on several platforms and really made it look, uh, look real, that she was behind a sex trafficking ring out of a, operating out of a DC pizza parlor with, with kids of all things. And how scary, right? Of course it was untrue and it was easily debunked, but people really bought into this. And one individual actually went in, and I can only assume that, you know, he was doing what he thought was heroic, and went in and shot up a pizza parlor where people go to eat pizza, for goodness sake, go to have dinner, and could have really hurt someone. And it's only, it's a miracle that no one was hurt or killed. So that's pretty scary. So it's up to us to look for the things that um, make information and make news credible. So uh, one way we can know and we can check things is that a real, a real credible news source is going to have a set of ethical principles and guidelines that they adhere to. This is an example from The Economist. And um, they, for example, say, honest, fair, and fearless in news gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. They want to maintain editorial independence. Reporters use objective data and research to support their work. And on the other side, they have uh, policies around conflicts of interest. Uh, one thing, new employees that previously worked in partisan positions are forbidden from covering politics. So credible news sources are going to have those kinds of checks and balances, have policies governing editorial and how they gather and share information. So there's a lot of things that you can do to be a uh, responsible consumer of news media. You can understand the role that confirmation bias, stereotyping, and other cognitive biases play in how we interpret events, news, and information. We all have a framework that how we view the world, and that's just normal. We're all human. Um, families, our education, where we grew up, all these things influence how we look at news. But if you recognize that bias, that can help you in understanding uh, what's really true and not. So if you see a headline, for example, that really elicits a strong response to you or for you, that might be because you have an existing bias. So go look it up, research it a little bit, and see where else that news re was reported so you understand. And consider your role as a citizen in a democracy and your responsibility as a civic participant and a citizen watchdog. That is so important. The things that we share and we talk about with our friends and our neighbors and the people that trust us, in turn, influence them. These things matter in making decisions in our lives. So be responsible and consider yourself as a participant in democracy. Understand the standards of quality journalism that are designed to minimize the influence of individual and group biases, like the slide, the previous slide I just showed you. Um, that's any, any credible news organization is going to have those kinds of things. And develop strategies for verifying news and information. And I would, I would add as well, there's, there's a difference between fact and opinion. When Ten people are talking on a cable news channel about a pe one piece of news for 20 minutes. That's not news. That's their opinion about that piece of news. So I like to stick to the facts and, and uh, make my decisions accordingly. And also, deep fake videos. Um, you can't always believe what you see, and you can't always believe what you hear. Deep fake videos have become uh, rampant. People will be talking on a video, and you're certain it's the, the words are coming out of this individual's mouth, and it's not necessarily true. There's some very sophisticated techniques for manipulating video. So here's another example of a, a, a tool that you can use in discerning what's, uh, how to evaluate your news. This is news media bias ratings, and there's a whole bunch of these charts online. They're pretty easy to find, um, media grid, I think you can search. And this one in particular has, you know, the center, these sources, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, NPR, Christian Science Monitor, AP. There's some great sources in the middle, and that's really where I try to stick. I try to stick to the middle lane. I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I don't want to have my beliefs continually reinforced. I like to just have this, the facts 
and they make my decisions accordingly. So, and then it shows, you know, far right, far left, uh, different sources. So there's several of those that I find really helpful. Then there's another thing, you can also check, there's fact-checking sources where you can check a, a news, an article that you, or a story that you saw and you want to check into it. There's several sources, and this is a, a source that actually checks the fact-checker, if you will. So these are, they've claimed are pretty credible. PolitiFact, Snopes, Snopes is a good old, I have used Snopes a lot. Truth or fiction, these are great sources for checking the facts of a story, so you, uh, you're armed with that. I mean, these are more biased sources. So there's Fact Checker from the Washington Post, Fact Myth, um, Check Your Fact, Zebra Fact. So uh, not all fact checkers are created equally, apparently. And I would, would contend that this is so important to our democracy and to the divides that are in our country, is to have the right information and be able to share and discuss things intelligently and not worry about things that don't even matter, that aren't even true. There's plenty of things that divide us and we can't continue to let that happen. That's our responsibility. As Franklin Roosevelt said, democracy cannot succeed unless those who express their choice are prepared to choose wisely. The real safeguard of democracy, therefore, is education. Information is power. Let's take back our power.